Hello, this is Brad Wild, and I am in Big Bear City. This is uh, about 7,000 feet above mean sea level, and we are about oh, 30, 40 miles west of LA. And we're going to take a flight north to a Lone Pine, which is at the base of Mount Whitney, the highest mountain in the continental United States. So don't adjust your set. It's about 5.30 in the morning, but <clears throat> don't adjust your set. It's about 5.30 in the morning, and we're going to be taking off to the west. But let's do a little planning. So notice our airport here, again, LA and Big Bear. Got Lake Arrowhead here. Ontario, and we'll reduce our map here, and here is Lone Pine, and again it's at the base of Mount Whitney in the Sierra Nevadas, and it looks like a fairly straight shot, but we're going to take some considerations It looks like a relatively straight shot, but we need to pay attention to airspace and restrictions and limitations we might find along the way. So let's zoom in, get a closer look. The main two areas that we need to be concerned about are these restricted areas. And there's a reason why, why these are restricted. This one contains Edwards Air Force Base, so you've got military jets flying in and out of there, maybe even a space shuttle. And then there's another one a little bit north of that, which is around China Lake, which is another Air Force Base or a Navy Base. I'm not sure. Anyway, you're dealing with military jets flying very low at high rates of speed. So the general idea is that you just stay out of restricted areas. Now, there are occasions when you could fly into one with permissions, you're on an IFR flight plan or you have flight following and they're not expecting any busy activity. But generally, you just want to stay clear. There's one other area here. It's differentiated by the magenta, or red, I guess, hashed line. So restricted is the blue, and this other area is surrounded with magenta. So what is the difference? Well, this is called an MOA. This is the Isabella MOA, which stands for Military Operating Area. And again, it's got some restrictions. And you can see those at the top of a sectional. Let me go to our, see if it shows up on Las Vegas. Nope, that's not the one we want. Let's try LA. So up here at the top, you'll find the MOAs in red and here is Isabella. So it's 200 feet AGL from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. So let's just say it's Saturday. We're traveling on a Saturday and so we don't we don't really need to get any sort of clearance to fly through it legally. You can fly through an MOA by getting by talking to ATC, but um, we don't have to do that today. Restricted areas again are a little more difficult, and you need to be a lot more careful about it. Restricted areas are again uh, just areas that you want to steer clear of. But these are listed on the map as well, so we have that 
215, which is over Edwards Air Force Base, and it is unlimited and it's continuous. And the one over China Lake, 2505, same conditions, unlimited altitudes, and it is continuous. So you would need permission at any point to fly through those areas. But we're going to avoid it. A couple other types of airspace, besides the restricted, are these with the dotted blue circle. This is called Class D, and these are controlled airports. And the sectionals show them as blue airports, which is very helpful. So they have a control tower, and you need to talk to them if you are less than 2,500 feet AGL. And we're going to be flying much higher, so we don't really need to talk to them. Of course, you can just to let them know that you're in the area as a courtesy. A quick word about airspace, and this is a huge topic, and you can spend a lot of time learning about this. But around LAX, you have Class B. And again, this is probably the most restricted airspace you could fly through um, legally without a huge amount of difficulty. But you can't be a student pilot, for instance. You have to have a transponder. And of course, you'd be talking to air traffic control uh, continuously. And you'll notice here that it's got these little numbers. Like here you have 100 over 20. And this is just telling you that the restricted airspace is active from 2,000 feet to 10,000 feet. And 10,000 feet throughout this E-class space is the ceiling. So as long as you're flying above it, you're OK. And again, all this is done to protect aircraft flying into LAX. And notice how it kind of extends out towards the east. The red magenta solid lines indicate Class C airspace. You would need a transponder. You're, you're going to need to um, be in contact with ATC. And um, it has the same altitude indications, but they're in red this time. But notice that it only extends up to 5,000 feet. But notice that it only extends up to 5,000 feet. So as long as you are above that, you don't legally have to talk to them. One other area are these magenta circles. They surround a type of E airspace. Almost all the airspace you see that's not in C, B, or D is E. And the differentiation between this E that's around the magenta circles or borders is that this E airspace has a lower ceiling. So it extends down to 700 feet, where out here it extends down to 1,200 feet. And these are uh, transitional areas, allowing aircraft and protecting aircraft making a descent um, down to these airports, or an ascent as they leave. There is a thin magenta circle around a couple of airports in our MOA, and they are just telling us that instead of 200 AGL, the, um, the bottom surface or the, the bottom ceiling of this MOA doesn't start until 1,500 feet, and this just allows traffic around this airport. So that's just a quick overview of airspace. There is a ton that you can find on YouTube. And of course, you can read the regulations if you need to. 
So taking all that into consideration, let's plan our route. So I'm going to switch over to World VFR. And I'm going to fly to this intersection here, Donna, and add that to my sky vector flight plan. Then to avoid this restricted area, I'm going to fly over this General Fox Airport. Now I could fly to the Palmdale VOR, but this will give me a little bit more berth around this restricted area. I don't want to fly at an altitude that would get me over these mountains directly, so I'm going to fly around them. So I'm going to look for a fix. I could be I could choose this airport here in your Kern, but notice how close it gets to that restricted area. I don't want to mess with it. So I'm going to go to the World Low Airport or a map and select a waypoint here. Salt D. And when I flip back to our VFR map, notice we stay on the east side of the mountains and we avoid this restricted area. Now we've got the Owens MOA that we're flying through. I wonder if there's anything different about that. I forgot to check. So um, LA, and we're looking for Owens, aren't we? It again has the same restrictions as the Isabella. So I think we're in good shape to fly through that on a Saturday. So that's our route, and now we just need to plug this into our Garmin and let that uh, be the guide. And I'm going to fly at, at 10,000 feet, I suppose. Um, I know I need to change that. I'm not going to be IFR. I'm going to be um, VFR. So I want to, because I'm heading west, it's going to be an even altitude plus 500. So how about 10.5? And then as we head east, legally, I probably should be at an odd plus 500. So either climb to 11.5 or I just uh, stick it out, but then turning north again, I can go back to my 10.5. So that completes our route. Let's get this plugged in to the Garmin using these. Um, <clears throat> so let's get this plugged into the Garmin. So click on our nav log. And because I'm in Firefox, I'm, going, I'm not going to be able to select this. So I have to download it. And I'm going to open it in Adobe Acrobat. You can open it in Adobe Reader. I just happen to have Acrobat, and I'm going to select these points and copy them to my clipboard, and then go over to Explain Tools, and convert this for my Garmin. So I'll paste those waypoints or coordinates into the box and we're flying from Big Bear to Lone Pine. I 
got my root from sky vector. It's for x plane, and I convert it. And now I right click and I save this to my FMS plans. And now I can load it into my Garmin in the airplane. We mentioned it before. This is the Coronado Baron 58 twin engine Beechcraft. It's kind of hard to see here in the dark. So we'll just stay inside. I've turned on my flashlight so I can at least get the battery on and my avionics on and panel. Turn on our beacon and nav lights just to be on the safe side. Pull up the ancient Garmin 430. And let's put it in our flight plan. Here is the flight plan we just saved. So I will enter that. And the waypoints have been entered. And we're going to be using GPS. So that takes care of our programming. Pretty simple, actually. And mixture should be rich, and then throttles all the way forward. And we're going to flip on our pumps until we get fuel flow. And they top out. This is kind of priming the pump. back and then we can turn our throttles back to about one inch open or half inch open. So we yell clear out the window and then we can gauge our start. Turn this to both. There we go. And once that has settled in, Right alternator, left engine, and both magnetos, and how about a taxi light? Save the strobes for later. So that is east, the sun is coming up. We need to do a 180, we're going to be taking off to the west. Release the brake. Then we'll pause here and do our run up. So we'll start with our prop recycle. <clears throat> we'll start by cycling our prop. Zoom in a little bit and run this up to 2200. And then cycle our prop. And back down to 1700, and we'll check our magnetos. I'm looking right here. Oh, we don't need the flashlight. Turn that off. And we're just looking for a drop of less than 50. That's left and right. 
no significant drop. Left engine, left magneto, back to both. Right magneto, back to both. And now feather our prop 100%. And pull back on our throttle to a thousand. Well, we make a couple of last second changes, or <clears throat> while well, we make a couple of last minute. So back to a thousand RPM while we do our final prep. So landing lights on. And the strobe is on. I forgot my left alternator. So we'd be draining the battery. Sorry, I have to pause here and let you know that this is a new recording because I had audio problems and autopilot problems. So here we go. All right, now that we have our lights set, I've gone ahead and set my altitude to 10502, only because I can't get it to 00, zero for some reason. And I want to start my timer. Let me reset this here. And we're off and running, so we're ready to take off. This is an uncontrolled field, and normally you would announce to the general traffic, big bear traffic, this is Baron 2822 Delta taking off for runway 26. And that way, people may be coming from the other end or on approach would know your intentions. But those landing lights and taxi lights don't do much, do they? So at about 80 knots, rotate. And we have a positive rate of climb, gear up. And I'll just fly the runway heading. Looks like we don't need our flaps anymore, so I'll retract those. So the airplane is cleaned up. We can now engage our autopilot. And navigation, and we want GPS and our altitude is armed. So as I mentioned in my little public service notice, I had issues with that. The other thing, sometimes you on the Garmin 430, you have to activate that first waypoint. So I will do that. And you can see the difference it made. So it wasn't activated. So sometimes uh, you'll notice that you're just going off Helter Skelter and one way to solve it is to activate that first waypoint. All right, we can also come back on our props. In other words, go from find a course down to 2500. And we'll go with prop sync. I didn't mention it before, Big Bear is a big snow ski area. So people in LA who want to snow ski can take the trip east 
about 30 miles and about 11,000 feet and do some skiing. Otherwise it's Lake Tahoe, which is north. I've got Lake Arrowhead straight ahead. We will turn at a waypoint before we get there. Dawn A. But we have if you could see it, LA would be way off in the distance. We might see Ontario Airport. San Bernardino is just probably almost off the left wing. Nice view for our passengers. So let's see if we level off. I had some problems where no aircraft would level off and hold a cruise altitude. So I turned off all my plugins. And looks like the nose is coming down. It's a good sign. Pick up some speed. Get my yoke back. So, fingers crossed. Coming up on our first waypoint. We do have a little map here. So, Big Bear and then a slight turn to the north. We'll use that a little later. Vertical navigation. By the way, if you learn how to use the Garmin 430, which is really an ancient tool, it's almost an abacus compared to some of the new avionics, but you can get some details. Not a lot. So, 3.5 miles to our first turn. Lake Arrowhead. This is a resort lake. A lot of people in LA have vacation homes here. I actually have family here. It's about uh, almost 6,000 feet. This is San Bernardino. Not much traffic in and out of San Bernardino Airport except for um, cargo, a lot of cargo. Mount Baldy, which is the tallest mountain in this range, is would be straight ahead and it is snow covered at times. So we're just a little east of uh, Lake Arrowhead. This is Silver Lake, which is at a lower altitude, just off to the west. I'm going to leave you for a few minutes. So now that we are cruising, one thing I wanted to show was how to thin our mixture how to lean it. So I want to 
see these go all the way up, peak, and then start to come back. So I'm slowly thinning it using one of my function keys. And when it drops, then I go back a notch. So our fuel flow has dropped from 14 to 8. So considerable savings when AB fuel is about $5 a gallon. And my altitude is holding, yay! So a quick view out the window. This is Interstate 15, which basically is the way anybody in the LA Basin gets to Las Vegas. So you wind up through this pass and uh, it's quite dramatic actually and uh, if you're a train buff you've probably seen videos of trains climbing the famous grade through here but you can see how the road splits up here's a map from Bing and we're right about here so you can see how 15 makes this little jog and then heads off towards Las Vegas can see it going off in this direction and this is Victorville Airport and in X-Plane if you've got your AI aircraft turned on there are a lot of aircraft there because they have been parking idle airplanes there since COVID started so there are a lot of airplanes parked in around in and around that airport Here is Palmdale, just off the left of the nose, and I believe this is General Fox in the distance. Off the right wing, we have Edwards Air Force Base, and notice this runway here in the dry lake bed. It doesn't appear on the map, and the only thing I can imagine that might be is for the shuttle, which of course has been retired. And I'm looking here um, at the map. So there's a few little lakes here and then this dry lake bed and that runway would be kind of in this direction. So kind of interesting. You wouldn't expect to find a river out here in the middle of the desert. This is called the High Desert area of Southern California. Off in this direction you have Bakersfield on the other side of these mountains in the San Joaquin Valley. And Palmdale looks like a nice clean airport. I've not landed there. Sunlight hitting the sides of the building. Kind of nice. And I mentioned because we are at 10.5, well above uh, uh, 2500 AGL, we do not have to call the control tower and we can do a flyby but sometimes it's a courtesy just to let them know but I think at 10.5 we should be in pretty good shape so coming up on our turn shortly so just two miles to General Fox and it's showing nine seconds outside view here. I don't know what it is about airplanes turning, but it's kind of cool. <laughs> and there's another 
landing strip on the dry lake bed which does not appear and here you can see Edwards Air Force Base as we turn to the north over General Fox Airport And next on our agenda we have the Mojave Air and Space Museum. Seems like an odd place to have a museum, but that's where it's located. And then we have, what's the name of that city? Um, California City. So here is the Air and Space Museum. Got it on a road map. So here's Mojave, California City, Air Force Base off to the east. Again, Bakersfield way off. And I believe this is Lake Isabella which is the namesake for the MOB, MOA that we're flying through. So our next waypoint is SALT D, which is simply a GPS coordinate. And let's see how, just a minute out from that, four miles. So looking at our map, we're right about here. And we'll make this turn and then off of our right wing we'll have Inyo Kern Airport and then the China Lake Base. So we're avoiding this restricted area here as we did this one here. And now we are in the Isabella MOA. Yes, yeah, so you can see China Lake in the distance, in your Kern, and our turn over Salt D. And next lap is Lone Pine, Oscar 26, 67 miles. Lake Isabella or Isabella Lake. And we can see that off the right wing. And here is Inyo Kern Airport and City and China Lake. I notice the visibility in this airplane is lousy because you've got these engines here. Not that I would turn down a Baron, but um, when you're used to flying a top wing, as I was, having this engine in the way doesn't give you a lot of options in terms of visibility. Probably standing a lot on your tiptoes. Now the scenery doesn't look that rugged. And that's typical X-plane, kind of smoothing things out because it saves a lot of intense graphics. Now this could be remedied with ortho scenery, like my friend Steve Haynes at Dustbound Aviator uses. Be sure to check out his channel. But uh, I am using Alt Pilot X HD, so it's better than off-the-shelf X-plane scenery, but still it looks a little strange. But hey, it's a simulator, right? So let's think about our uh, descent. 
we can use the descent or vertical navigation tool. So right now we are at 10.5, let me see which one, which one of these knobs turns and which one advances. So 10.5, and we probably want to be at altitude a couple miles out, be on the safe side. So before our airport, Oscar 26 or Lone Pine, and we will descend, oh, 1,500 feet per minute. I was just wondering if any of you caught my error. I was looking at it thinking, what am I missing? Well, target altitude, not current altitude. So right now this says zero. So let's crank this down to 4700, our pattern altitude for Lone Pine. And now we've got this negative number. And when it says negative 1500, we would, we, we would, we would wanna be on our descent. So we'll keep an eye on it. It looks like it's going slow, slowly now, but it's gonna pick up speed as we get closer. So, glad I figured that out. I'm sure a lot of you are groaning. But, hey, did you catch it? Probably did. I just wanted to point out um, 395 here and this canal which carries water from the Sierras down to LA. It's an actual concrete man-made canal that runs along the base of the Alhambra Mountains. So you can see this is increasing very quickly. So I need to set my target altitude. Close enough, and I'll arm that, and we can actually begin our descent now. And again, I said 1,500 feet per minute. Come back on my throttle a little bit. So this will slow down if we're doing our job. Now we're drop, we're descending a little bit faster, so this number is coming back up. So I can slow down my rate of descent a little bit. It's hard to fly this way. So we'll fly over the airport. Don't need a heads up, do we? And I love how they paint the name of the airport on the runways. And we'll enter a left downwind. Set my heading to boy that's that my scroll plug in. This is not easy. So I want 16 here. Just helps to have a reference for doing patterns in X plane. So turning downwind. 
keeping an eye on our speed. And we're at least 45 degrees, so we can begin our base turn. And turn final. No pappy lights. That wasn't too bad. So the big question, where to park? We'll just stay out here in the end. There we go. Let's just shut it down. So mixture lean. Kill the lights. Avionics. Alternator and battery. Now let's get those doors open. I'm sure it's hot. So thanks for joining me. This is Bread Wild and Lone Pine. Hope that you found this slightly interesting and maybe entertaining, but also informative. See you next time.